We moved to Hong Kong January 65. Michael's fifth birthday was in Hong Kong, and Rhett was two. We just moved to Hong Kong until I was about 12 or 13. My dad, he's a real wanderer. He's like me, and he's been all over the place. In the 60s, Hong Kong was wonderful. Everybody's from a different country. Very exciting place. In school, my classroom was made up of quite an even mix of all races, creeds, and colors. I love it. I can't really stay put because of it. It was a very good school, actually. My dad wouldn't let me go to the American school. <laughs> has to be British. We were living on Old Peak Road, which is halfway up the peak. I think Kel assumed that my mother, well, she can't work in Hong Kong. That didn't last. Within the first three months, my mother was asked to do a movie. Shaw Brothers was host to American and British movies. She worked on the first one, went really well, because most of the actors and actresses were from the States or Europe. They wanted somebody they could speak to. The makeup artists were there for a long day. It's a lot of hard work. She started pulling me in to help her with that. Thousand Eyes of Sumeru. Shirley Eaton was in that. She was the James Bond Golden Girl. She was a lovely person. Throw Frankie Avalon into the mix and uh, George Nader. Characters like this, and they'd be on this wild ride somewhere. And the story never made sense. I loved Klaus Kinski because he was such a devil. You know, he'd play tricks on everyone. He loved to come in and stir the pot and hand everybody his own pages. Michael would love to come to the studio or on location. He was very good. He knew to be very quiet and sit somewhere off to the side. He was always very happy during that time. The mother would fuss over him. You could go into film. You're cute, have a nice way about you. She encouraged that. Michael and I, I remember we used to have a lot of fun playing in those sets, you know, make our own little movies and things like that. It was a lot of fun. Hong Kong is a great place to grow up. I think I benefited from that lifestyle. I think it stayed in me for a long time and it stayed in Michael for a long time too. We all grew up very fast in Hong Kong. It opened our eyes to more possibilities and instilled within us a wanderlust. We just wanted to keep traveling. It's got to change your life going through something like that. I think Michael could see endless possibilities. It changed us all forever. We had lots of interests in different things. I wanted to be a dancer for a while, but I never took the lessons. The Spanish dancing was always my favorite. Flamenco and motorcycles, and motorcycle racing. Hold on, then. You've got to really hold on. Hold on. Wait until she... You can't move oh, until she takes it. Yeah. Yeah. Stand by and action. What is in there? What have you got, uh, The micro right. I guess one thing I did before I got into music is I started getting into acting. It's one thing I was really serious about. And the big brown thick thing. I just got waylaid in a big way for about 10 years. It's white one. Thank you. Okay. So Michael, how do you react to the fact that young people who come to see you in this film see you participating in the use and administration of drugs? That's the only thing I was worried about in the making of the movie is that I am participating. But my character is actually trying to get, get away from that and is quite fed up with the people involved. And, and trying to involve him. Certainly the, the, end, the ending will justify the means. <laughs> In my own life, I've lost a few friends, so I know the experience, but I have to play this as a character, so it might be a little bit different. I don't know, maybe grief is the same for everybody, perhaps. Yes. Okay, come. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. As more time goes by, the better I feel about it, even. It's good to be in London, and see that it's like critics pick of the week and it's doing really well here and people are understanding it. It's been claimed as the best rock and roll movie ever made by people like Enemy and Melody Maker. This is the best reviews I've ever got. Because they say well, they're very kind to me before.
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I like I like movies. Dogs and yeah. Has it been released I'm yet? very nervous about it. No, we haven't even started it. I start in a month's time. And what's that going to be about? Can you tell us? Uh, dogs and space. Oh. <laughs> we're just waiting for Bowie's in there and, um, I don't know, we really want to see the concert. You know? yeah. How did you hear about this? Um, oh, we heard Countdown? about it a long time ago. It was on Countdown and uh, we've been here for three weeks. Three weeks, well, right? waiting, just sitting and waiting. Not waiting for Bowie, but waiting for the shoot. Yeah, waiting for the shoot. <laughs> this is the opening of the film, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're establishing that character? Mm, yeah, kind character. of. You don't actually, you probably, you won't even probably even notice the characters the way the movie opens up. Yeah, I you'll mean, notice them, anyone, really. but you'll go, oh, they're just two characters. And then yeah. as the movie comes into the next scene, you get to see Sam, and then you get to see Anna, and then you get to see them together. Mm. They're pretty sort of strange couple. You don't, they don't sort of seemingly shouldn't be together at times, and other times they're perfect. I work 16 hours a day on a set quite happily. You know, I really enjoy it. I think it's an incredible medium. It's a combination of music, costume, sight, and story, and everything. Michael Hutchins. Michael Hutchins. Roy Dunn. Now, your involvement with Dogs in Space, and you're playing the character Sam. Yeah. You knew Sam before you did the film. Do you find that he comes into you when you're acting, or you create a new Sam from what you know of him? Um, no, I, I guess uh, it, has to, it can't be exactly the same. It can't be a replica or anything, so you have to try and uh, interpret the way he thinks rather than copy his actions. So mm. it sort of comes into you. Do you think you're actually anything like this um, character? It's like being a kid and pretending, essentially. On a more serious note, it's about retaining emotions and letting them out at the right time. It's like therapy. It's good. I'm enjoying it a lot. He felt worse than before, and after weeks of suffering, he went back to the chemist. Please help me, Mr. Chemist, he said. All the false people in this world make me terribly sick. The pharmacist replied, you must get over this terrible objection to the people in this world, but I'll give you some milk of magnesia anyway. The green monster is much fatter now, he had, as he had eaten two trains, recovered in a few days. He was lying by the railway tracks. Michael, mm. I imagine that you've been approached to act in films before. Why did you choose to do this one? This one, I really like the script and I like uh the thought of working with Richard foremostly. I wanted to work in a movie where I had people around me that were going to be totally honest with me. It's a work of love as well. Everybody involved, they're working just for the movie. It was a few years after punk and it was the metamorphosis of that into something more than just anarchy or whatever they were the words we were all using at that time. I guess it was a transformation time, a time to actually justify the experience, to translate it into something maybe constructive for once. It's very therapeutic, because you have to find out a lot about yourself to take on that character, what you agree with and what you have to discard in yourself to become something else. But that's kind of magic thing about it. It's a little world you create. People think we're rats. I think we're... How did you feel about it when you saw the end? I, I, I really like it. The only problems I have with it is some of the reviews thought that I was being myself or the movie was about me or something. Just I knew wrong. And no, uh, I'm actually being somebody else. I really think there was a very good attempt at trying to make a type of movie for young people. People missed that point, you know. It's made by a very young director. Right? Yeah, so young so. director. Yeah, we, we missed the action in the shot. So we need a close-up. The reason why I did Dogs in Space, apart from working for Richard Lansing, who I think has got an enormous future, is that I wasn't interested in furthering some sort of glamorous role or into the fame of it. It's not a glamorous part, and it's a serious part, and I think it's a worthwhile movie. 
You know, I think it has a message to kids. It's got some incredible reviews in London, so I'm very happy about that. So I think I'll just Tim, we have all decided to get a new keyboard player. Doesn't matter. I was going to leave anyway. Are the scripts piling up at home? There's a couple around. There's some great scripts, and nobody will make them. I'm not interested in the, um, the shallow, lightweight kind of movies. I want something a bit more than that, you know. Okay, look forward to seeing you in the next Wim Wenders. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll be a, an eagle or an <laughs> angel. Or, yeah. Yeah. I got a little bit part, a couple of minutes in a Roger Corman movie. In a film called Frankenstein Unbound, it was his first film for like 25 years. He wanted someone in a band to play Shelley. That's how he thought of it. I just got a few minutes in it. If I'm still in it, he'll miss me. Maybe on the cutting room floor somewhere. There were some good people. Like Jason Patrick played Byron. Mary Shelley was played by uh, Bridget Fonda. And John Hurt and Raul Jula is Dr. Frankenstein. That seems to me the best way to learn is to be around people like that, watch what they do, how they work. Terrifying, actually, to be around John Hurt and try and act. I think everybody did it because they wanted to see Roger Coleman work because he's kind of famous for his B-grade horror films. His style is hilarious and it's fun to watch. Singing is definitely my love and uh, I sincerely have a high regard for acting for movies. I think it's a wonderful medium as well as music. If I can do more, I certainly will. I love to be able to keep doing it till ripe old age, actually, acting. It's not quite like music. It's, it's a different rush. When there's a lights, camera, action, it's a different rush.